This is about camo from Green Light. Welcome guys to this video. We're gonna be testing a DGI Ray Sci-Fi Surface Light Shader from Destiny's Garden. So I'm gonna quickly walk you through how to use this and I'm gonna point you towards some um, things you can potentially run into and some walkarounds and also some useful ways of using this uh, great uh, shader. So once you have it installed, you can find it in your Dash Studio formats, my library, uh, shader presets, Destiny's Garden, and then you have a DGI Ray Sci-Fi Surface Light. So you have four, pretty much four subfolders here. Emissive means that you got a set of. Let me just make this a little bit larger. There we go. A set of shapes and kind of glowing or emissive. Uh, surfaces that, that will indeed illuminate your scenes. So I'm going to show you how that works. Then you got pretty much a, a similar set of you know uh, surfaces that are called non-emissive. So these are pretty much uh, uh, you know like the other set, but they do not glow. They do not provide any you know lighting at all in your scene. Then you've got a set of um, shaders here that are transparent and a wireframe so these are kind of you can peek through them you can look through them and cast light through them they're pretty cool then we've got some utilities and some you know grunge stuff here i'm going to point you towards what this is in just a second okay so building this is not going to be a long video i just want to quickly you know walk you through this and show you some cool um things so i'm going to create a no normal cube which is a dash primitive it's one meter in size. Okay, as soon as you have it, uh, you want to select it and also go to surfaces and have it selected here. Sometimes if you don't have this set here, it will not catch uh, the change. So select it in the surfaces tab, just to be sure you select the surface. Because this works on a surface level, okay? So now going back here, we can choose an emissive one and let's just take, um, let's grab this one, all right? So the moment you click on it, double click, it immediately changes the way it looks. Now, if I just add a plane now, like a plane, let's use 20 meters, um, like that, all right? What you wanna do next is go to render settings, obviously choose NVIDIA iRay, um, then go to environment, and what I'm gonna do is use scene only. So we're not gonna use any additional lighting because if you use dome and scene, uh, you're gonna catch the environment map or the HDRI uh, image that surrounds your, your, your scene. So I'm not gonna do that. I just want to have scene only. So I'm just gonna be using the lights we have in our scene. Right now there are no lights besides that emissive surface here. So I'm gonna add a camera very important when you add a camera make be sure that um, you click on it go to parameter tab and headlamp and turn this off it doesn't do any good if you have the light casting or love lighting there is a way of turning it off of you know setting it to not render uh, just be on when you, you know design your scene but I just found it really uh, well, I just don't, don't want it to be there at all. I just want to turn it off. I want to have control over my scene. So that's that's the thing we, we just did right now. We made, uh, just using this, this light here, which is kind of in the cube, right? And what I'm gonna do is switch to here. I'll switch to NVIDIA iRay preview. So we're gonna see it live and interactive here. So you can see it's really cool. It really shines. All right, let me just, uh, it, it, you know, it really shines. And the thing you can do when you have the cube selected here, go to surfaces, uh, you can go down here and choose, there is a setting called emission temperature. So what you can do with that, you can set it to 6,500 instead, which is then gonna alter that to a white uh, state, right? Uh, however, it's only gonna be white 
when you use it in conjunction with tone mapping set to white point one one one. If you alter this to say a uh, a warmer color scale, you're gonna end up in a colder render. So as you can see now uh, the render behind me looks colder, right? Make paint on dark wood. I'll just move this out of the way. Vice versa, if you change the white point to cold, you're gonna get a warmer render. So back to that and just easily get sidetracked by all the all cool options we have here. All right. So what you can do here, once it's set to 6.5, you can also click on the emission color and change the color of the light. All right, pretty straightforward. Um, back to the uh, stuff we are started with, 2.9K. Uh, what you also can do is, if, if you back the camera, you can see that it reaches a little bit of your scene, which is kind of a cool thing, right? But you can set it to reach more by increasing or decreasing this value over here. So if you set it to nine, it's gonna you know, reach more and illuminate more in the scene. You can pretty much go wild with this and really exaggerate, right? Or just do vice versa, just go really tiny, just a little bit, so just have a vague effect somewhere. Note that, you know, at some point you start losing the power of the glowing of the light itself here. So the original 50,000 value works pretty nice. Okay, so um, the next thing I'm gonna cover is if you look closely, I'm gonna switch to texture shade right now. If you look closely at the box, it doesn't really look mapped as the box should be, right? This has to do a little bit with, if you look at the camera in the UV map, the box has its six sides mapped in this manner. So they are not um, done in a typical way. You know, a normal box would have all sides square. Uh, this just to your box doesn't have that. Um, there are ways around it. You can model, you know, a box inside a 3D software, then import back into the studio. That's one way of doing that. But another thing you can do is you can click on the box, uh, on the cube, go to surfaces. At the very bottom, you have a set of horizontal tiles and vertical tiles. Okay, so you can, you know, uh, shift this value to, you know, find a, you know, a value that kind of works with your item and you will find this useful when you map other types of, of uh, you know items so it depends on depending on which side you look at it you might need to adjust that value or not um, you can also go really wild with this and do as many as you like right do the same thing on the y-axis you can add as many as you like and that will then render as well so if you render this uh, it's gonna, you know, preserve its shape. All right. All right. Pretty cool. So let me go back to the original default value one one. There's another thing you can do here. Uh, if you go to texture shaded, sorry, texture shaded, and if you go back to the, just make sure it's selected here. Did the surface itself right? Go back to here, and utilities ground the very bottom here um, of this set, you can find tile one, two, three, four, five, and 10. That kind of changes a little bit how the tile works on your object. So it simply changes, you know, how it's mapped. And this is another way of just clicking and seeing, well, maybe that works better, or maybe this works good, maybe this is okay, right? You can just quickly, you know, tile that. Uh, doesn't need it will match always, but it's just like you know another way of, of switching those tiles. Okay, so pretty much, um, if I just select uh, that uh, one point, I don't know fifty two or something, right? Um, if we add the other one, the other version, let's add a new cube. All right, cube. 
select it here I'm going to use the move tool translate to move it to the right side this secondary cube I'm going to select the surface here again now going back here I'm going to choose the non-emissive uh, versions um, I can just show you first by you know picking the emissive ones is that you can play and add you know several of them in your scene at the same time and each and one will light and illuminate your scene uh, I'll just click on, on render here instead of doing live preview anyway you see that they they interact with each other and provide lighting that's pretty cool now the next thing I want to show you is that you can uh, instead of doing an emissive one on the secondary one right you can go back here and choose non-emissive and just click on it which in this case it will still have the same will still have the same shape and pattern uh, but it will not you know light so as you can see it still looks the same if we had a light on it we can actually sense the pattern here it's the same pattern but it doesn't cast any lighting so this is simply a shift of you know how it looks. Then we've got these. Um, if I just use choose another box, let's move that box around a bit. So we've got the third box. This box here, we can make it transparent on wireframe. So for instance, we're gonna use a uh, cage thingy here, right? Now we're going to put the camera slightly behind this box, or in front of it, so we can sense um, the, you know, the lighting and geometry behind it. And as I said, it doesn't shift, it doesn't change if you do not click on the actual surface. So go back here, select the surface, very important. Now I'm going back to the cage, there we go do another render. It's very important that we get that surface selected. So now it's, you know, preserving, a, it's kind of a semi-transparent look through object now. So with these, you can pretty much either, you know, add boxes like, like we're doing right now, or you can add, you know, all kinds of shapes like spheres, uh, but you can also alter you know other props. I'm going to show you that in a second. Let's just add another type of primitive. Let's do a sphere and using the segments 50 side 100 so it's a nice looking sphere, right? Uh, move that to here. Select the surface, very important. Now I'm going to do emissive on it and I'm just going to take this one here. And again, it's the same thing there, especially if you have a sphere um, it usually maps more in uh, this direction going around than maps going like that. Usually it's two times. And again, it depends on how it's mapped, but this one is mapped, if you look at it on the UV map, you can see that it holds pretty much almost a square uh, you know, setup of, of of the mesh here but it wraps around the entire sphere so it's it's really almost two times so if you want to set it right you want to go to surfaces here and change that horizontal uh, and uh, map it twice let me just see if I can Oops, I'm changing the wrong value, that happens. Horizontal tiles, there we go. All right. The problem is there is an edge, right? So you need to find a good match there. You need to find that edge or else it's gonna look funky. And then you go vertical tiles, you can do that as well. So you can pretty much find that perfect spot there. Okay, and do a render of that. Awesome. So as you can see, I just particularly love this uh, set of shaders. They are 
super easy to use. Um, they work beautifully. Um, and let me just check the camera. There we go. That's the camera I want to have. Turn off headlamp. Okay. And here we have the render through the camera. As you can see, the sphere just casts beautiful, soft, uh, you know, light effect on the floor. So another way to use this, these set of shaders, is to actually apply them to other props. So what you can do is you can load an environment. Let's go ahead and load an environment. Um, this is particularly useful with, um, not sure what happened with my mouse here, it's not responding. Uh, particularly useful uh, in stonemason props because he uses a lot of tiles in his texturing. Uh, so it's just a great way uh, to change and alter, personalize, make it a little bit your own. All right, let's do sci-fi crew quarters. Let's do that. All right. Okay, let's go texture shaded. And uh, the thing is, the cool thing about these shaders is that they are, you know, if you want to use emissive ones, then they will pretty much illuminate your scene. Uh, just a great way of of using a light because you can get so creative with it. We can go in here, um, right in this corner, right, and you can just pick um, surface selection. Okay, so we can pick, for instance, the uh, um, this um, door, right, and go ahead and select. Uh, let's see. Shader presets. All right, emissive. So what can we use in the door? Well, there is a lot of things we can use. We can use maybe something like that. Okay. Now, the moment you add it, you need to. In most cases, when you add it to uh, you know a prop like I've just done right now, you might need to tweak the horizontal tiles. So you can you know work it. Uh, do you want it to look like this or this? This is a sci-fi scene, right? So it can be. You can play with it. You can you know alter it as much as you like, and when you feel happy with it. You can just click on NVIDIA IRB Preview and it's going to illuminate uh, using that shader on that door. As you can see, you get awesome, you know, looking sci fi um, effects and lights uh, working just with a simple click. And if, if you want that to glow harder, you know, you just adjust it here on here and do. The emission uh, luminous value, right? You can just set it to below ten times more, and illuminate the entire scenery just from that very door. Um, and you can play with the colors like we've been using, you know, before. You can use a red tone. So uh, you know, this package is a gold mine. It's truly a gold mine. You can, I mean, you can personalize and change, you know, items that you have in your runtime already, and completely change how they look, how they light. You don't even need to light the scenes because lighting is kind of built into this. So I highly recommend that you get this ASAP. All right, awesome. This is what I wanted to show you here quickly. There was a link to this great shader packet just below this video, along with a link to my own um, Dash Studio IRA Pro Lighting, which will teach you everything you need to know about Dash Studio IRA Lighting to get you know, awesome professional results quickly and easily. Now then, go ahead, have some fun, grab this, uh, post your renders, 
and would love to see what you can do, come up with, and I'll see you next time.